Here we will go through an example of designing a register cell to such that you, you see the steps that you, you would need to take. Yeah? So here we have the specification. We are going to design register A, which includes M number of bits with the following specifications. We have a data input of B. So we will have data input. The control inputs are in the form of AND, OR, AND, XOR. We have three control inputs. And here we see the control input combinations. So this is the first case, second case, third case, and fourth case. So you can see that at any time, only one of the control inputs will be equal to one and the rest will be equal to zero. So this is the not encoded case. And here we have the register transfers for each one of those cases. We have the AND operation, the OR operation, XOR operation, and we have the hold state. The AND operation will be, will happen when we have the control inputs in the form of one, zero, zero, or will happen when we have zero, one, zero, and XOR will happen when we have zero, zero, one for the control inputs. And obviously for the hold state, we will have zero, zero, zero. When this is the case, the current value that we have will be stored, will be kept inside the register. So looking at what we have here, we can see, we can see that the load signal, which is used in order to load the, the register with new value, new data, could be set as all of those three control inputs. Because if any of them is equal to one, then we will load the register with some new value. But if all of them are equal to zero, the register will hold its current value and it will not be updated. So finding out the load control here is straightforward. We just or all those control inputs. Then we can find the state diagram or state table. We just need to note that there are only two states since we are dealing with the register cell and we have the state assignment equal to the register cell output value. Okay, so the output value of the register cell will be the will be equal to the state. Once we have the state diagram or state table, then for optimization we can use the Carnot maps for four to six variable variables. If it's below that indeed, if, if it's below six variables, then we can use the Carnot maps, or otherwise we can use computer aided or manual optimization. So coming back to our example, we can form the state table. This is the compact state table indeed in this form that you can see. This is for state table for a single cell. Over here we have the current state. For the current state we can have only two possible values, zero and one, because we are dealing with a single bit here. And then for the next state, we can consider different uh, scenarios, different conditions. For the next state, if we have all the control inputs equal to zero, and is zero, x or is zero, and or is equal to zero, the next state will be the same as the current state. So we have zero and one for zero and one. Then if we have one of the control inputs equal to zero, I just separate them from each other. Over here, for example, we can see that or is equal to one. When or is equal to one, and obviously and is zero and x or is zero, then we will refer to the value of the data input, which is b. If b is equal to zero, we will have the next state as zero and one. If, we, if b is equal to one, we will have the next state as the or of the current state and b. And since b is equal to one, we will get one for the output for the next state. Similarly, in the next two columns, we have x or equal to one. 
and again n is 0 or is 0 over here for given value of b the input signal b equal to 0 and b equal to 1 we have the xor of the current state and the input signal and finally when and is equal to 1 we have or is 0 x or equal to 0 for the given values of b the input data input we can obtain the next state value so this is a compact way that we have our state table form if you look at it in the form of a uh, truth table then the current state and x or or and b will be our inputs and the output for us will be the next state so if we form the truth table it will be in this form next state will be our output the current state and x or or and b will be our inputs if you want to have the complete truth table since we have one two three four five input variables we will have two to the power of five or 32 rows and then for each case we will up we will determine the the value for the next state and afterwards we can use the carnot map and find out the expression if you do so you should keep in mind that for cases in which we have more than one of the control inputs equal to one, those will be the don't care cases. However, instead of uh, filling the complete, forming a complete the truth table for the system and then using the Carnot map, we can directly obtain the uh, the next state value as well. Okay, how we can do it? We just refer to this. Uh, we, we refer to this compact state table you can see here that if and xor and or are, all of them are equal to zero next state will be equal to the present state so next state which is a at t plus one could be written in the form of di because it will be the input to the d type fill it, fill up one bit so a here d is here next uh, state or input to the fill it, fill up could be formed referring to what we had over there by this term not and not x or not or and a itself that it comes from here from this column indeed so not and and not or and not x or and not or when all of them are equal to zero we will be receiving the same state so that's what you see here and then we can refer to the next two columns when and is equal to zero x or is equal to zero and or is equal to one now we refer to the b as well we know that in this case we will do or operation so what we have here will be a i or b i okay but when does it happen it happens when we have and equal to zero x or equal to zero and or equal to one Uh, that that's one way of saying it in other terms you can also say that since we here we consider the only the cases in which one of the input controls will be equal to one we can replace this with only or and ai or bi as well because when or is equal to one these two will be automatically equal to zero so that's from where we get this term here and then if we refer to the next two columns in the next two columns we can say that here we have the x or so when x or is equal to one we will have 
bi x or ai and finally for the last two columns we will have and and then bi and ai okay so those also could be are written here so and and ai and bi x or and this is ai x or bi indeed and therefore we have the expression for our next state obtained over here then looking at the expression that we have here we can kind of uh, modify the expression in order to take out the control variables because these control variables are the variables which could be shared among all the register cells that we are going to design okay so we will have the register cell which receives the control variables and those control variables will be shared among all the register cells so basically we expand the terms that we have for ai and bi in order to have the mean terms including ai and bi yeah so we will kind of do like this if we have ai we will write it in the form of ai and bi or ai and not bi and for uh, bi we will ex we will uh, replace it with not ai and bi or ai and bi if we do so if we use this replacement here and here and for bi we do it over here and then factor the terms out we will end up with what you can see over here let me just clean this out so over here we have the term ai and bi ai not bi and not ai bi and not ai not bi is not present there and then we can simplify it further we end up with this with the expression here in order to uh, to have the input to the, the the input expression to the philip philip the type philip philip that we have in a simpler way we just replace the terms with new names c1 uh, for the first one we use the c1 or and x or we replace it with c2 over here we have c2 as well this is c1 and then for for c2 and c2 or not and we call it as c3 okay so it's also written here and as a result di will be in this form so c1 ai and bi or c3 ai not bi or c2 ai and not bi and now we can see how our register cell will look like here we have our register set which is composed of a single dfd fill up which receives clock the input to it is provided by the or gate which receives all these three terms and those three terms are composed of the control inputs and the data inputs from ai and bi the control inputs or x or and and are used in order to generate those three intermediate control signals c1 c2 and c3 and they appear here at the input of the register cell so this will be our cell number i and then later we will connect these individual cells to each other in order to have the whole register design